Mike. What a clip. I know, I'm down with the swirl. I said, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and look, so the show, Mistresses, is getting a lot of buzz. Tell everyone uh, the premise of the show. Uh, the premise of the show really is about a group of four friends, and they're all dealing with different versions of infidelity in their life. Now, so, your character is married. My character is married, um, and this is one of her, that clip is that's Jason George, and he plays my coworker. Um, and she's dealing with infertility issues in her life with her husband. She can't have a baby, and their relationship has become very stale. Um, and she doesn't feel sexual anymore. And then she goes to work and gets hit on by this guy and sort of looks outside the marriage to feel fulfilled. And oh. uh, it's, re it's really actually a heartbreaking storyline. That What? No, it's... <laughs> Well, her life explodes. Oh. Yeah, by episode three, her life explodes, and it just keeps getting progressively worse. And it's, um, it, it's, it was actually the most emotionally drained I've ever been working on anything. It's, it was definitely different than killing demons on Charmed. <laughs> Charmed. <laughs> yeah. Different kind of demons. <laughs> so I heard originally you didn't even want to take the role on Mistresses. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. Just because of the title alone, I just, you know, I didn't want to be involved with anything that glamorized Oh, look at, the, look at the married lady. <laughs> no, I know what you no, mean. Is, you when, know what I mean? Just the title alone is, it's so um, provocative that I was just worried that the show is just going to be that. But it, it actually, it is that, but it also has a lot of, of heart. Um, and the characters have a lot of depth. And there, it's it's a sexy show on top of all of that. Well, I mean, but it's also refreshing to see that there's an actress, and I know there are many of them, but, you know, one with integrity who, based on the principle of not wanting to glamorize mistresses, you almost didn't take the show. Yeah. You had to read more into it. I almost wish the show was called something else, like, you know, four friends that make mistakes and then yeah. <laughs> come together to work it out. You know, something like that. So now how's baby Milo? Oh. I know. He's almost two now, right? He's, yeah, he's 21 months. And, um, you know, FaceTime is the greatest thing that ever happened. I FaceTimed with him on, on the way here, actually. And he mm -hmm. said, I love you, Mama. <gasps> okay. So it is true. I was reading that Milo started talking about four months, started walking just a few months after that. So you've got a little genius. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if he's a genius. I do know that he is... Uh, He's very smart and very dramatic. Very dramatic. <laughs> he is very, very dramatic. Are you still breastfeeding? I'm not. Um, I stopped right before he turned one. Actually, he stopped. He, he oh. just decided he didn't want my boob well, anymore, and I was, a, I was a little offended, but it was actually, I think, hard, a hard thing for me because it was his decision where, you know, that, normally I would we, be like, wait, this is supposed we to be normal, my thing. We don't hear this. It's usually yeah. the women who really... Yeah, he wow. leaned himself. Well, good for him. Uh, good for you. Yeah, good. Uh, so, I guess. <laughs> so now you got your after, bo after baby body back. Well, Did sort of. I don't think you ever really get it back. Did you feel pressure? You know what? To be honest, I did not care to lose the weight at all. I was 170 pounds the day I gave birth to him. I was enormous, and I'm five foot two, so that's I was really say, a big. Girl like you, that's big. Yeah, and I loved every aspect of my pregnancy and and giving birth and all of it and after i gave birth i realized like you know this body was made to do really profound incredible exactly. things and it's such a machine and so i was very kind to myself i gave myself all the time that i needed it took me about 18 months i mean you Jeez, know wait. yeah i, I st my stomach will never be the same i've i've surrendered to that i just look at my husband and i say i'm sorry honey but you're we are a woman and we're amazing we are amazing yeah, yeah we are i mean so now what are your thoughts on the backlash that Kim Kardashian is getting about pregnancy weight? I think it's horrible. I think it's horrible because who cares? Like, what does it affect anyone's life how big yeah. Kim Kardashian gets when she's pregnant? Yeah. She, you know, she's enjoying herself. She's enjoying, uh, she looks gorgeous. She, yeah, she gives good face. Oh, my God. She looks gorgeous. Look, what is this? I just wanted to look at your tattoo. I'm so distracted. Oh, is that a snake here? Tattoo cam, Rambo. It's an Urubu. What? Urubus. What's that? It's an ancient symbol for totality and rebirth. And that's an om, which is the om. Buddha sound of creation. Yes, om. All right, so happy belated 40th birthday. Thank you. I can't believe that... 
you're 40 years old. Uh, you, you, you were only 10 when you started start on Who's the Boss originally, right? Yeah. So a very long time ago. I heard that your husband did something very special for you. Cher? He did. He did the sweetest thing. <laughs> So for my 40th birthday, I never went to my prom because I was working on Who's the Boss. Uh huh. And so for my 40th birthday, my husband threw me a surprise prom. Aww. Yes. Now how did he get you there? Okay. So he got me there. I was working on Mistresses at the time, and he told me, yeah, that was me walking into the room. He told me that we were going to dinner to meet Gordon Ramsay. <gasps> and. I'm the hugest Gordon Ramsay fan. Second to me. Oh, huge, huge. I love him. I think MasterChef's like the best show on television. Uh -huh. Yeah. So um, I was freaking out. I thought, what a great birthday present to go have dinner with Gordon Ramsay. And we're going to do it in his kitchen at his place in L.A. and to London. And I was so excited. So we get there. And my husband said uh, he's going to take us through the back, through the kitchen. Yes, yes. And so we did all of that. I'm <laughs> waiting to see Gordon Ramsay. And he opens the door. And it was this Everybody big surprise. surprise. And he, it was so sweet. And he actually, um, after the surprise, he took me up to a hotel room and he had 30 prom dresses picked out Aww. that he had bought. And I had, you know, the pick of the litter. It was so sweet. It was so oh, that's sweet. Really thoughtful. He's the sweetest. My husband's lovely. Oh, you've got it all. Listen, everybody, up next, we're going to get Alyssa's thoughts on why troubled uh, childhood stars go through what they go through. We talk about it on Hot Topics. Now we're going to talk about it with Alyssa. So keep it here, okay? Thanks. <laughs> Anyway, we were talking girl talk. Um, Alyssa Milano is still here, and you were 10 years old, like we talked about in the last segment, when Who's the Boss came into your life. Do you have, I mean, from the outside looking in, all the characters on that show were so great and warm and touching. Do, do you have fond memories of, of being there? I have amazing memories of being there, and I think in a lot of ways, because growing up in this business is really hard, but being surrounded by that group of people um, for the eight years, as well as my incredible family, yeah. it was, you know, I had a lot of people to be responsible to. Um, and all of them had great, great support and wisdom that they shared. And yeah. I was very, very lucky to be surrounded by that group of people for so, those formative years. Yeah. So what do you make, what do you make of some of the childhood stars like Amanda Bynes? Um, I saw that you tweeted her out of concern. Did she curse you out? <laughs> No, she didn't curse me out. I, I, I don't think she saw my tweet. I, you know, here's, here's my thought on it. I feel like these kids would have a hard time and would be struggling no matter what they did, right? Because if you look back at the family, mm -hmm. Um, you know, like like Lindsay and and the the family is is very disruptive, right. right? So I think if Lindsay had gone to high school and then into college, and I think she would have struggled with the same struggles. Um, it's it's just that we got to watch her struggle because she's in the public eye. So I don't think you can separate. You know, and say that these kids are a product of the entertainment industry. I think kids are a product of their families. Some some adults say that childhood stars get the attention. And they're missing that attention. Like with Amanda, she's she's retired from entertainment. She's a multimillionaires. Do you think that there's a part of her that misses the attention? So I, I think that when it's all that you know, which again goes back to the family and yeah. instilling um, values and priorities, I think that when that gets taken away or when you decide to give that up yeah. it is an adjustment period but it only means that there weren't other aspects of that person's life that were are fulfilling yes. to her you know because i mean my my parents were so great they were still to this day they tell me i have to have a plan b in case things don't work out <laughs> yeah where did you grow up again uh i was born in brooklyn and i grew up in staten island, in staten island. all right yeah. so so it, I mean, I like that angle. It starts with home training. No matter what you do for a living, if you, you weren't, if you were dragged up instead of raised up, then maybe that's how things turn out. Yes. Well, I just wanted to clear up a rumor. So there's uh -oh. this really, <laughs> there's this really interesting rumor about you floating around, and it says that um, you were the inspiration for Ariel from The Little Mermaid. It, were you the inspiration for this character? I actually was. Yeah. Really. Yeah. 
on. I didn't know that when it was going on, but um, I did. They asked me to host the making of The Little Mermaid, and it came out there that the the drawing and likeness of The Little Mermaid was based on pictures of me from when I was younger. Which doesn't, is so cool! Doesn't that just make you want to dye your hair red and wear clamshell bra all the time? Yes, that's how I walk around at home. Yes. Well, as usual, delightful conversation with Thank Alyssa you. Milano, everybody. Thank you, so much. you make sure that you check out her brand new show. It's called Mistresses. It's Monday nights at 10 on ABC. Keep it here. We'll be right back.